Welcome back. In the previous few lessons, we learned about the value of Six Sigma projects, how they linked with organizational goals, how the drivers and metrics impact organizational performance. Now, in this subunit, we learn about the methodologies that are used in implementation of Six Sigma. This lesson is going to cover one such methodology, that is Design for Six Sigma. Design for Six Sigma or DFSS is a systematic methodology utilizing tools, techniques and measurements to design products and processes that meet customer expectations at Six Sigma quality levels. This means that the customer-driven design of processes and product is done with a Six Sigma capability. With help of DFSS, we are predicting design quality upfront. Top-down requirements flow down and are matched by a capability flow up. We have a cross-functional integrated design involvement, which helps in the early quality measurement and predictability improvement. In DFSS, process capabilities are utilized to make final design decisions. All this means that the Six Sigma is implemented proactively, so that we get a Six Sigma quality in the product even before it is in the market. It's like getting it right first time. The framework which is used to deploy DFSS is DM or DV, that is define, measure, analyze, design and validate. As said earlier, to implement DFSS, we make use of DM or DV framework, which is essentially define, measure, analyze, design and validate. As we can see that there are two phases at the end, that are design and verify. These phases help to design and ascertain the Six Sigma quality in the new product or service. Let us take an example to understand this framework. Alex the carpenter wants a revamped system for performance management of his employees, as Mr. John has suggested that incremental improvement in the existing system is not possible. In the defined phase, problem statement was established. The employees are not getting constant feedback and improvement opportunities cannot be identified timely. Then the team created a goal statement. To implement a comprehensive, well-aligned and consistent performance management system. As part of the measure phase of the project, the team analyzed the existing performance management system. They quantified the problem and also by interviewing key stakeholders, Team members identified what the company wanted from such a system. There were factors like frequency, availability, capacity, security which were important to be in a system. In the analyze phase, the team identified the vital problems of the existing system and derived key requirements for the new system as an output of the analyze phase. In the design phase, the team came up with the possible routes and alternatives for the new performance management system. Then they compared the alternatives, selected the most feasible and optimal looking alternative, created an implementation plan and implemented the solution. In the verify phase, the new system was monitored for next three months and new performance management system was found to be effective. It took lesser time to find out the improvement opportunities for employees. In this manner the project was done to revamp an existing performance management system. Another framework that is also used in DFSS methodology is IDOV, that is identify, design, optimize and verify. This is different in its implementation and within system engineering. This is a sophisticated method used for testing and validating business process design. And yes, it undergoes four different phases true to its name, the identification phase, designing phase, optimize phase and validation phase and meets customers' specific requirements with the value assessment of process performance and business models. The first phase involves identification of customer needs. Proper identification of customer needs is very essential for launching a new product or service. A charter is prepared, voice of customer and competitive analysis is performed to identify critical to quality characteristics. The design phase deals with various issues such as functional requirements, development of alternate business processes, evaluation of available options, and selection of the most appropriate business process, based on CTQs that were identified during the first phase. This phase involves use of tools like FMEA, 
design of experiments, etc. The optimized phase makes use of CTQs, as identified in first phase, for assessing the tolerance level of a selected business process. To do this, advanced simulation can be used. In this phase, the capability of a business process is predicted, existing designs are optimized and alternative design are also developed. Common tools include, Monte Carlo simulations, capability analysis and models etc. The last phase is verify or validate phase. In this phase, testing and validation is done for the selected design. Prototypes are built to validate the design. Failure modes, reliability and risk analysis, performance assessment of the prototype is done and changes are made if required. By now we have understood the methodology of DFSS, and the frameworks that are used to implement DFSS. We must know that DFSS is a preventive measure, which prevents defects in the product or services. In the next lesson, we learn about the common methodology of process improvement, that is, DMAIC. We'll also see how DFSS and DMAIC align with each other and what differentiates them. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next lesson.